Previously on Town Hall 11 Free to Play, we did some behind the scenes footage while upgrading the Barbarian King. Today, hey. let's upgrade something in the lab and talk about what's my favorite play style. Can you believe that in two days it will have been exactly one year since we started this entire free to play series? We started as a brand new Town Hall 7. That's absolutely mind blowing, guys. I'm not even kidding about that. That is a lot of gameplay. What's going on, guys? My name is Joe, and welcome back for episode 36 of the Town Hall 11 free to play series. Today, we need to get something down in our laboratory. We're going to spend that hammer of fighting that I bought yesterday. You guys knew it was coming. And we also need to spend off a bunch of our elixir to put something. Something else down naturally to keep this thing going it's sitting idle is never really a good thing but before we get into the laboratory or do any attacks today I want to ask you one serious question if you had the choice to pick one mode that you could only play and you enjoyed it all the time what would it be are you more of a farmer do you like to trophy push are you more into the clan war or would you like to be a professional clash of clans player that plays with the pro teams and you get to work really really hard for that one and three star it's a really good question right because a lot of players play differently each player that watches this channel plays in a different manner you might not play as much as i do it's highly unlikely that you play as much as i do but when we get into our player profile and we take a look at these labels i have these set up as a generic setup because a lot of players like to spy on my account and see what's going on with the base while i'm not recording a, a video and so i got clan war leagues and i'm a little bit of a teacher and i am a veteran player but i also have other things that I'm interested in. I like to farm and I like to do clan wars and I like to trophy push. And so I won't say that I value one more than the other, but when it comes to these days, I like to just kick back and farm a little bit. You know what I mean? I like the clan war, but it does come with a little bit of added pressure for the planning process. And it's a little stressful at times. It depends on how long you've been playing and how often you war is when you shake that off. So there is a poll over on YouTube that I want to show you here in a moment, but first I'm going to go ahead and knock out an attack. We have have changed our armies again you got to remember that uh if you don't change your army often you will tend to get very very bored very very fast and if you haven't noticed i had a comment i think on the last episode a player said that i did like uh dark elixir farming four days in a row or something like that that's about accurate <laughs> that was about accurate because we were trying to finish up our queen and we also needed to upgrade our king but with that we also need to uh you know work on other things and change up the army for each video that way it's not the same exact thing over and over and over again this is a really good army if you're trying to work on the queen walk while also trying to understand how to get the second star for your clan war leagues some of you guys out there might still be having a lot of issues with that some of you guys out there might not understand the queen walk and this is something that it's really hard to teach i've made multiple videos on the queen walk but you also got to practice in order to be successful with it. We're going to go ahead and move the queen in. We're going to use a wall record today since yesterday I did not nope. uh, do any uh, <laughs> any siege machines yesterday in the two attacks that I did. And it looks like our queen decided she wanted to go the other way. So guess who was going a little too slow on this? All right, so we're working our way into a Town Hall 12. Let's go ahead and freeze that for a moment. And we do have a Yeti in the center while the queen works around the outside. So hopefully this Yeti is going to be powerful enough to get rid of that. There it goes. Okay, so Yeti, <laughs> Yeti got the uh, town hall down. I was a little concerned for a moment there. I almost messed that up. All right, so uh, let's see here. We do have wall breakers still, so we can crack the queen in if we want to. Let's drop baby dragon there, baby dragon there, baby, baby, baby. And let's go, <laughs> baby, baby, baby. <laughs> I like my baby back, baby back, baby back ribs. <laughs> that just happened. Oh, my gosh. All right, let's go ahead and drop some wall breakers to open up this compartment for the queen, maybe. <laughs> and we're going to be successful with that break. And unfortunately, we're having to deal with an air defense over there. Uh, looks like most of the loot is up here on the top side of the base. The queen's going to work her way into a dead expo. Let's go ahead and drop a rage spell. And uh, this is how you function and maneuver the queen if you tend to, you know, mess up. If she goes the opposite way, you just got to play into which way she's going. You can't really necessarily predict every single time where she's going to go. I've had multiple occurrences where it's just like... Where are you going? You know what I mean? Let's go ahead and get baby dragons over here. Let's drop one up there and there. And we'll go ahead and go ahead and freeze that grand warden for a moment. Where's this queen at? Queen's still in the core working. We're going to hold on to that rage spell that came from the clan castle. We're not going to use that one. And let's go ahead and drop a couple balloons there. And let's freeze this air defense. Even though you know it might actually help if we just got some lightning spells and zap those off. 
Not a bad thought, actually, huh? So I might go back and change this army, as a matter of fact, and make it a little bit more interesting. We're going to end up running out of time. Uh, again, the queen, she decided she crossed all the way back across the base. Did you notice that? The queen went, she started over here, and then she went over here, and now she's back over here. Oh my gosh, what are you doing, queen? You're crazy. All right, let's go ahead and drop that final baby D. It's going to go after a mortar, not going to go after any additional loot. So we're going to go ahead and walk away from this raid and uh, pull off about 5,000 dark. Now, let's go ahead and jump over into our screen that's over on YouTube, and I want to show you the stats from that question that I asked you earlier and it's very interesting our findings let me go ahead and update it let me uh, refresh the screen and see if we got our maximum amount of votes at this very time okay so we're over 5,000 votes and you'll notice that farming resources and base development is incredibly over powerful or overpowering over the rest of these options we got trophy pushing at five percent clan war at 17 percent and competitive clan war do any of you really know what this means at six percent so <laughs> what's interesting about this is that we've been really focusing towards our our base development over the last year you know we worked as a town hall 7 we went through town hall 8 town hall 9 town hall 10 and now we're very much into town hall 11 so that's a really long time of gameplay a lot of you guys probably haven't been with me from the very beginning a lot of you guys might have found me through town hall 9 town hall 10 maybe even as a town hall 11 is where you found me and started watching and so What's interesting about this is that a lot of players value the farming aspect because you could just kick back and farm and you don't really have a lot of pressure on you. A lot of players or 17% of our voters said that they like clan war and I like clan war. I love clan war. But the thing about clan war is, is that it becomes a little demanding over time and you, uh, st you tend to spend more time clan warring than you do developing your base. And this is where one thing might be out of balance. And remember how we talked about balance yesterday, we were talking about the base upgrades and the balance of our base being equal across the board well this is something that's very difficult for these players to maintain it's like you want to farm a lot but the problem with farming a lot is you get really sloppy in clan war which tends to turn you off from going into clan war does that make sense like some players out there will clan war maybe every once in a blue moon because they get really super nervous to go into clan war because they've been using those farming armies and they don't have a lot of practice with the clan war armies on the opposite side you have a lot of players that will you know, really zone in on clan war they love the competitive feel but they don't love it so much that they want to be a competitive player and so what ends up happening is is they stop upgrading their heroes because they want to have their heroes available for the clan war so these stats are quite fascinating when we look at them and really think about what goes into these stats competitive war i added this and i did not add another option for all of the above because i only wanted you to pick one that you truly loved which one do you really love and you can live without the rest of these and i see that clan war is coming in a you know at number two for a really good reason because i it's understandable i used to be one of these players competitive clan war i'll recircle back around to this one i don't think a lot of you guys know what this means exactly so of course you might be a very competitive player by nature you really love the clan war but you're not in a competitive clan like uh i don't know uh vang tang or uh, uh one hive tribe gaming some of those those clans and the thing about those clans are is that you have to be maxed out already more than likely you have to be maxed out on whatever base that they're looking for and you also need to be able to invest the time and i'm not talking about just looking at a war base picking an electro dragon army and hoping that you're going to three star i mean i'm talking about actually screenshotting that base going into Discord or whatever chat application those teams use and they talk back and forth on how to actually break down that base it's a lot of work that a lot of players aren't willing to do and they never probably never will do so it's just one of those things that I found completely fascinating we're gonna go ahead and get back into the screen and knock out our laboratory upgrades real fast so if you've been following the series you know by now that I've upgraded most of the stuff to do the minor hog rider hybrid attack and then after the last clan war leagues I decided that I wanted to start upgrading a different army that I wanted to have have a little bit of fun with and uh, hopefully be successful so we went ahead and targeted a lot of those troops in the last week and a half or so we used a hammer on the witch we used a book of fighting on the bowler we knocked out the natural lengthy upgrade on the bat spell and we need to use the hammer on our level three ice golem now to be honest with you i would either use the hammer on either the ice golem or the Electro Dragon. Both of these are incredibly long upgrades. And so you really have to be aware of that when it comes to using your hammers and what you're trying to accomplish on your base. Because we're working on our hero upgrades, we're using the hammers to offset and do the, the Dark Elixir troops. That's the only reason I'm doing them. That way I can use them right now and I don't have to wait until the Clan War Leagues to do it. I've had a lot of questions asking why I'm not upgrading my Dark Elixir troops during the Clan War Leagues. It's just because I normally have an Elixir upgrade 
it going during the clan war leagues or something like that and we just use the hammers on our dark troops so we're gonna go ahead and swing the hammer on this guy and finish it up this will be a completed ice golem and we will now be able to use that entire army minus our electro dragons and it looks like we need a little bit more loot in order to put the e-drag down today and since we have let's see here we got 12 days until the clan war leagues and the electro dragon takes what 10 days i think it's 10 days for this upgrade yes so we're gonna go ahead and go back out and do a raid get the elixir necessary to put this electro dragon down in this video today this appears to be a decent little base that we can take on a lot of heavyweight upgrades happening at the same time all the inferno towers are down and looks like all the expos minus one are down under upgrades so we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of this uh let's see here we're gonna go start with a queen walk over here dropping our scout balloon and looking for the seeking air mine let's go ahead and place a baby dragon over here and here to start working on some buildings and let's go ahead and start that process over here as well that way the queen will follow our wall wrecker in this time around unlike the last raid so we got her working on an elixir storage and then she's going to walk down the line let's go ahead and drop our wall wrecker baby dragons are doing very nice clearing out some buildings one's going to get taken out by an air defense and looks like our wall wrecker is going to get slowed down because it took on a straight line of walls this tends to happen if you misplace it like i did now it's realigned itself it's lined up with the town hall now and the queen's going to follow it into the base let's go ahead and get a rage spell down that way she goes into that air defense looks like that air defense is going to take out one of my healers but it looks okay so far all right we're looking good Let's go ahead and drop a baby dragon there, and looks like we got our Yeti inside the base. Let's go ahead and rage spell up that Yeti and take on the Eagle Artillery. Queen, come on. You need to hurry up, Queen. Please, you can do it. All right, she's going to take on some ground set skeleton traps, and she is actually going to get hit by the barrage of artillery. Let's go ahead and use a rage spell on her. She's going to move into, take out that Eagle Artillery, and I need her to get up into that air defense is what I need her to do. Let's go ahead and drop a baby dragon to work on that elixir storage. Actually, she's going to target instead. And let's go ahead and get baby dragons down here and here to work around this top side of the base. We got another air defense right there that I wish I had lightning spells for, but I don't. I changed my army, but I didn't bring it in this army. Let's drop another rage spell here for the queen. And she's going to work on the clan castle. Looking good so far. Let's freeze this air defense. And the baby dragons are teamed up. Queen's going to take out that air defense next. So we can bring in a baby dragon to take on that archer tower. We got a minute and nine seconds. And realistically, all we're doing is kind of meticulously breaking down the base one by one. This is one of the cool things about a queen walk is that you can learn how to break down a base by doing so. Let's go ahead and drop baby dragons back here. We got some in the center here working. Queen's going to take out the air sweeper and the air defense. We got 51 seconds. Let's drop baby dragon there. And all we have left is one baby dragon remaining. So will we have enough to get the job done? Let's drop a baby dragon there. We got a bunch of wall breakers here that I need to get rid of. That didn't work out very well. So let's go ahead and uh, we got two free spells. We got to make them work. We got to make them happen. Uh, Queen's ability. Let's go ahead and crack through that wall. Come on, wall breaker. Catch up. <laughs> and she's going to take on the barb king. You got the party king going on there. Baby dragons are going to work their way down. Queen's going to take out that king. And then we're going to go ahead and freeze this area. Let's get rid of these wall breakers. And I wish I had one more baby dragon. We might not have enough here to get the job done. Come on, baby drags. You can do it. Let's freeze this again. And we got 12 seconds. It's not going to be enough unless this queen can crack through. We were really close, though. This is how you really learn how to do the meticulous attacking that you see in Clan War. Is this, this is one of those strategies that you can definitely do. It speeds up your timing, and you learn how to apply your troops correctly and apply your spells correctly. Just an idea. All right, so we do have the elixir to put down the electro dragon for our upgrade. Now, this is definitely a troop I would much rather use a hammer on personally, but I do need it for the upcoming clan war leagues if I do, you know, actually use that attack that I talked about a few weeks ago. So I want to have that ready and I want to have it at level two. So we're going to go ahead and wait the 10 days on this one. And we can always use a hammer on other things like the P.E.K.K.A. The P.E.K.K.A. has to go to level seven and it is also a 10 day upgrade. But we have accomplished so much in the last 49 days when it comes to our laboratory. We've taken off so much time with the hammers that we've been able to get. And uh, to answer the original question, I think I forgot to answer the question of what my favorite playstyle is right now. I think it's more of a combination of everything, to be honest with you. I like to do more of the instructional and help you guys out. It's not necessarily about me. When it comes to building a Town Hall 11, this isn't really for me. I've been here and done this before. So farming, it's a little tiring at times. It's a lot of work to farm like this as often as I am doing. But showing you how to do 
this and keeping it balanced throughout the entire thing is what I value most of all. In Clan War, I take it incredibly serious. I mean, way too serious, I think. When I fail an attack, I will probably spend about 30 minutes to an hour after the fact looking at that attack and breaking it down, trying to understand what exactly went wrong. But I will probably never play as a professional player because it's not something that I would necessarily value. And it's also a major time commitment that would take away from the videos. That's just me personally. I don't think I will ever play on a pro team. I would rather sponsor a pro team before I ever play for a pro team because it's just one of those things that I just do not have the time for. So we're going to see if we can find a base live real fast. Oh my goodness, really? I got to do this more often. I haven't been able to find one of these all day. So we found ourselves a semi dead base and uh, we're going to hit this one, take the resources off of it since we are out of elixir. And I think the Grand Warden is going to be finishing up very, very soon. So we're going to take on this side of the base with our Queen Walk. And this is a good way to finish out the video right here. Let's drop a baby dragon. Let's drop a balloon to scout for a seeking air mine. Let's drop another one there, as well as another baby dragon. And let's crack the queen into the base. Let's send some scouts in, looking for scouts. Make sure we time them just right to open up the compartment for that queen to go in and start taking on the barbarian king. Level 29 versus a level 50. She should be successful. She should be. <laughs> she might get punked out. It's happened before, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. So she's working her way into the base. We do have a single target Inferno Tower. Looks like the air defenses are all in this area as well. So let's get some uh, balloons down. Let's use a rate. No, we don't need to use a rage spell. I don't think she's looking pretty good over there. Let's drop some baby dragons here to grab some of this loot. And uh, we might need to start working that wall wrecker into the base. Let's do that. Let's work the wall wrecker in. And let's go ahead and drop a rage spell for our queen. She might backtrack. This is what she tends to do when she runs into walls. And now she's going to start engaging a wall. No, she's actually going to follow along with the wall record. That's exactly what we want to happen. She's going to back out and go all the way around. All right, so we do have a wizard tower there. And it looks like our Yeti has made it into the center of this base. Let's go ahead and zap this area or lightning spell this area. You know how, you know how it is. Some of the players get really salty about that. And let's go ahead and use a rage spell on the queen, maybe? No. No, it looks like the Yeti Mites are going to take down the single target. They're going to pr come pretty close. All right, very close. Almost close enough, but one shot it by the queen. Looking good. Let's go ahead and drop a baby dragon there, there, and there. And it looks like the queen's going to work her way into the Expos and take on the Dark Elixir. We got a minute and 24 seconds, so we got a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and use our Wall Breakers to get rid of those. And uh, we do have two Rage spells remaining here. So let's see what we got. Expo ran out of juice. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Yeah, the expo was running really strong and then it ran out of juice. All right, so baby dragons have overpowered that area. Let's drop some more over here. Queen's working her way up here. Let's go ahead and drop a rage spell on her. And we're going to be able to break down this base, I believe, in time. I hope we should be able to take down this base the rest of the way. Let's go ahead and drop baby dragon on that grand warden. Drop another baby dragon there, another one there. And we got one rage spell to finish this out. So we should have plenty of time to get the baby dragons into the area to finish out this base and finish out the video strong. That's the way I like it. Steal massive amounts of loot, keeping our progress moving along. We're not going to spend any more gold because I think I got a couple of builders that are going to be finishing up here very soon. And we have, uh, I think, another defensive upgrade that we need to get down. Let me go ahead and take a look at that real fast before we finish up for today. 8,000 Dark Elixir on that. That was very nice. Very, very nice. All right, so we need to put down another one of our Elixir collectors at uh, 800,000, 840,000 gold. And then let's see here. We got a Wizard Tower finishing in the next 20 minutes. And then 10 hours from that, we got the Grand Warden. So I got to get working on that Elixir again. Oh, my goodness. See how it never ends? In order to keep these builders going, you just got to grind, grind, grind. But remember, not everybody plays like this. So let's go ahead and put that Elixir collector down for upgrade for the next five days. And that is going to finish this up for today. So again, hopefully you're able to get something out of today's video, guys. It's a very very interesting topic that I found very fascinating to see that many people saying they enjoyed the farming and uh, base development over anything else. But what do you guys think? Drop it down in the comments below and let us know how you feel about it. And if you enjoyed our content, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe if you have not done so already. And if you like watching us every single day, turn on those notifications. If you need any additional video support or you want to see this series from the very beginning, click one of those links over there and we will see you in the next one, guys. Take care.